So we don't need to remember that number. We can just activate this. That remote opening is a glitch. So here's the thing. I'm I'm a doctor. I'm not the doctor, but I'm a doctor. I ha apparently, I probably know the doctor. I borrowed a uh, sonic screwdriver from him. It's obviously what happened. Shenanigans back again, and welcome to MMOMG. I'm combining weeks three and four of Secret World Legends into one video this episode, as I didn't get to experience Endgame and thus have a lot less to talk about. I'll be giving my final thoughts on the game towards the end of this video, but there's still some other topics to cover, so let's get started. During the third week, I got to experience the game's second dungeon, Hell Raised. It's a trip through a small slice of hell where you discover the fate of Theodore Wicker, who supposedly opened the door between dimensions and never returned. I played through it twice via the queue, and unfortunately didn't get players quite as helpful as in the first instance. They weren't rude or anything, but both groups were in quite a hurry and in no mood to explain fights or help new players collect lore. I want to take a moment here to thank my stream viewers for feeding me boss mechanics and lore locations as I made my way through that dungeon. My experience with other players overall has been mixed. While I've already had a couple of goons readily steal my quest objective while I'm busy fighting its guards, I also found players in zone chat willing to join me for taking down a world boss. We got along so well, we then tackled the third dungeon and added each other to our friends list at the end. My point is that regardless of what Funcom labels the game, it still very much qualifies as an MMO, complete with all the perks and jerks that accompany the genre. As an MMO, you might be surprised to find that Secret World Legends doesn't technically have a crafting system. If you think that means not having to collect and combine a bunch of useless items that clog up your inventory, let me just go ahead and dash those hopes right now as I introduce you to the game's gear progression system. Completing missions often rewards you with a number of item bags, which contain a random piece of gear of the appropriate type. Items come in several qualities, ranging from 1 to 3 dots, with more dots providing better stats. The vast majority of gear you'll find is of standard, aka green rarity, and typically level 1. Yes, each piece of gear has its own level, which can be raised by feeding it the extra green items you're not using via empowerment. Sacrificing cast-off green items only goes so far, though. Standard gear caps out at around level 20. To upgrade beyond this requires blue and better rarity gear achieved through fusion. This process involves getting two max level items of the same type and rarity, then sacrificing one to the other. As a result, your remaining item upgrades to the next rarity and starts over at level 1. Blue items max out at level 25, at which point they must be fused to create purple gear. Purple then caps out at 30, followed by orange at 35, and finally red item max level is 70. Additionally, items of blue rarity contain glyph slots, and talismans of purple rarity have signet slots. Glyphs and signets allow you to further modify gear pieces in a fashion similar to gems or enchantments found in other games. Note, however, that glyphs and signets also have their own levels, which can be increased by, you might have already guessed, feeding them other glyphs and signets. The gear progression system in Secret World Legends is easily as grindy and inventory clogging as any crafting skill available in other titles. The system at least produces things you'll actually use while leveling, though, which is something that can't always be said of some other titles' crafting systems. However, this gear upgrade process is also mandatory if you intend to have anything better than level 1 newbie gear, which is typically not the case with crafting in other games. This approach to gear acquisition means you'll always be making progress towards upgrades, which is great, but the downside is you'll never be excited to open item bags because the chance of finding epic loot is basically zero. Other than the headache of inventory micromanagement, the upgrade system isn't strictly better or worse than direct loot drop upgrades. If you typically craft in other games and feel kind of never lucky in terms of loot RNG, you might very much even prefer the steadier progression system found here. As for personal progress throughout the month, I ended up at somewhere around level 38 after about 65 hours of play, and barely stepped foot in Egypt as my last stream came to a close. I could have gotten farther into the main story had I skipped a lot of the side missions, but much of this game is so well written that doing so would really be a shame. Additionally, I got to experience the Whispering Tide event, which is a 40-player public raid that can be accessed in Agartha. The event is open to all and uses level scaling so everyone can participate. Overall, it's pretty fun, and I imagine it gives you an idea of what to expect during endgame encounters. 
While I have a lot of positive things to say about Secret World Legends, I'm somewhat disappointed by its microtransaction system. I'd call it a cash shop, but the game doesn't even have an actual cash shop menu. Instead, you can find portions of the shop scattered about the entire UI, typically by clicking the various green plus signs, the button that explains patron status, or individual costume pieces in the dressing room. Not being able to see everything available in one location for the cash shop just seems weird. As for the various offerings, there's a lot of pay-to-avoid-the-grind options here, from AP and SP to travel speed increases, and even items to significantly speed up gear progression. Costume pieces are available as well, but some items don't even have a proper image, and I couldn't seem to find any way to preview pieces on my character, which is an immediate deal-breaker when it comes to cosmetic purchases. Players unwilling to spend cash for the game's premium currency, Aurum, can purchase it from other players using marks of favor, though the exchange rate is driven by the community, and overall has been a highly debated topic. Anyway, let's get to my summary of Secret World Legends after a month of play. From a story and lore standpoint, this is one of the best written MMOs ever. Every mission tells a story, and with fully voiced dialogue, there's no such thing as a generic NPC handing out quests. The use of ambient sound significantly adds to the game's often creepy atmosphere, making this the best horror-themed MMO that I've ever played. Players may join groups, raids, and cabals regardless of faction choice, allowing you to play alongside friends without hassle. Investigation missions are often radically different from what you find in other titles, including puzzle elements that you might have seen in point-and-click adventure games, as well as scouring real websites to find clues and decipher codes. That said, some investigation missions are so cryptic that they're downright aggravating. Be prepared to know, learn, or look up Bible passages, Latin, sheet music, Morse code, math puzzles, and more. Upon reaching level cap, AP and SP gain decreases dramatically, and endgame progression is a pretty big grind from what I can tell, especially for free players. With 10 tiers of elite dungeons available now, and what's coming in the next few months, we'll soon know how viable free players will be when it comes to participating in endgame content. The AP-SP skill system gives you more flexibility than simple class-based systems, but you should invest points wisely, especially early on. While not full-on action combat, as you may think, the game still requires you to pay attention, especially during boss fights. As I said in the first episode, combat is comparable to that of Wildstar, making for a darker and more mature alternative. With only one battleground to queue for in Shambhala and one arena in New York, PvP is almost non-existent. The variety of cosmetic pieces, world locations, and theatrical systems seems very accommodating to role players and social events. With the story being so well written and now fully accessible for free, I highly recommend trying Secret World Legends for yourself, at least on a casual level. The combination of modern horror setting and puzzle-solving elements in the quests are well executed, providing a unique experience unlike that of any other MMO. Anyway, that's going to do it for this episode, as well as my month in Secret World Legends. MMOMG will return in September, and if you have an MMO you'd like me to cover, be sure to leave a comment below. In the meantime, I'll be streaming one of my favorite single-player titles ever, the classic action RPG Gothic from Piranha Bytes. Join me live Sundays through Wednesdays starting 9 p.m. Eastern Time on Twitch, YouTube, Mixer, or Smashcast. Please like this video if you enjoyed it, and consider subscribing for more gaming content. Remember to follow me on Twitter to stay updated on everything I post. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, take care guys. I'm familiar with that expression. It means the progress versus time graph for this operation is about to stop making us look good. It's these abnormally deformed condition 17s. Can we just start calling them zombies, sir? The autopsy shows muscle mass still expanding, new neural activity. I'm trying to isolate the chemical reactions, but in a sound bite. Zombies on PCP. Hmm. <laughs> Humor me for the sake of our field report. The condition. The zombies. They are slabs of dead tissue. Ambulatory, cannibalistic, but dead. Inert. What's the stimulus? My guess? An environmental trigger. 
See how they've been concentrated around this northern island? We need to contain this mutation. We need to get out there and... Absolutely no field trips, Radcliffe. Safety first. We're just a science detail, and we're already closer than optimal survival distance to the occult epicenter on this one. Leave that to the red shirts. Did you just drop a Star Trek reference, sir? Whatever gave you that idea?